And why do you have a glistening tan, Monroe? Mama likes. Let me dream. It's like one of those days when you don't want to wake up. Let me take that fact everybody says. You don't want to wake up. Put your energy into bed. With me to eat. Go kill my character. Take a few words to rest. You got things on contact. You can't spread it. Do it! Right away, but my fucker is the Well, it's that time of week again. Butch Hartman finally cranked out another show with Nickelodeon, who keeps giving him work for some reason. I mean, the current season of Fairly Odd Parents is going great, right? What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, memes aside, I think it's pretty cool Mr. Butch Hartman is making shows at all after all these years. The man is a living legend, and despite what the newer seasons of FOP have done to flanderize itself, the show's first few seasons are among my favorite pieces of animation, and I hold a lot of nostalgia for them. Danny Phantom also wasn't bad for its first two seasons, and neither was Tough Puffy. What blows me away the most about this new show, however, is the art style is actually different. Look at every other show from creator Butch Hartman, they all have the same art style, and I theorize that's why he always seems to get jobs with Nickelodeon. He had the same art style for so long, shows were always on Nickelodeon because that's where Fairly Odd Parents was, though that's just a theory, it could be some contract thing. It's refreshing to see a new Nick show with his name attached to it that isn't rehashing every other show. At least not in the art department. Oh boy, we're getting to the plot here, folks. I'm just kind of surprised that this got made at all given Nick's track record with creators. So in that regards, a thumbs up and a tip of the hat to you, good sir. Though these days he seems to be more of a businessman than anything, but that's just speculation based on the slow decline in quality in his work over the years. Maybe it's certain writers leaving, things being out of control, or Nick just forcing him to do things beyond his control as a creative. I don't know. What I do know is Bunsen is a Beast is uninteresting, uninspired, uneventful, and unnerving. The more time I spent with this trite, the more brain cells I felt withering away as I sat utterly bored. Everything is conceptualized fine for a kid's show, but it's the execution that makes this one so lacking. Even if the characters and setting are just a rehash of FOP, I still think it could have been good. Sure, I might be a bit jaded to the concept of rehashing a franchise I grew up with, but what about what the creators intended? Bunsen is a Beast seems like a callback to FOP. This generation's take on the characters since the original show is being killed off. As Pie Guy Rules outlined, And really, I think this is the biggest hurdle that the show has to overcome, proving to people that it's not just the Fairly Odd Parents again. This one so far has given me a very big Fairly Odd Parents vibe, and doesn't really seem to do that much original or interesting, at least in the basic premise alone. The antagonist of the series is a teen girl named Amanda. Basically, imagine if Crocker was Vicky. When a well-known creator has had a show on the air for 15 years, you kind of hope that the next thing they do is going to be different in a big way and not just more of the same. And unfortunately, that's the vibe that I get from this. It does seem to have some sort of affinity for Butch Hartman, especially with the Fairly Odd Parents finally seeming to come to an end, so maybe his name alone can get the show the proper promotion, development, and time it needs to possibly shine. A rehash can be done well under a positive attitude, but unfortunately they drop the ball on this one and it just seems really cynical. Bunsen is a Beast is primarily a comedy series, it's not moral based nor does it have any greater character development, 
as Fairly Odd Parents did, we understand who these characters are and what they're like through the visuals and lyrics of the intro, and that's all you need. Same with what Fairly Odd Parents did. They're pretty flat and uninteresting at first. We've seen this type of show plenty of times by now, but we're not here for the innovation. We're here for some good ol' entertainment. In that case, the execution is what matters. And what destroys the show is its main draw, the comedy. Every joke comes off as so forced and try-hard, it's like reading a family-friendly version of a 13-year-old on 4chan, or God forbid, one of my videos. In one of the first episodes, there's this ice cream guy claiming how much of a terrible life he has over and over and over. What's happened to my life? I used to have a girlfriend! This is weird! I just want to get my nails done and cry myself to sleep! I don't have a shower in my place, okay? I have to clean myself with baby wipes! WHY DO YOU THINK I ALWAYS SMELL LIKE DIAPERS?! It was funny the first time, why not show more of his lifestyle? The yelling constantly comes off as less as insanity, and more like, Hey, look at me, I'm funny, right? This is a funny situation, right? And this comes from a lack of characterization for him beyond one bland joke that got a minor chuckle, but that's all it should be. Having a kind of funny joke and then running it into the ground is a consistent theme of this show. Most of the time they're just throwaway gags, but the writers treat it like some kind of amazing joke from the heavens that must be shoved in our face throughout the rest of the episode. Why couldn't you just come up with other jokes and sprinkle them out all through the episodes like Mighty Magiswords did? I'm not a fan of that show. But at least I can appreciate it for not using the same joke over and over. It does try to take one page out of Mighty Magisword's book, and My Night and Me's book, and the Ben 10 Reboots book. Oh. Seriously. Are cartoons just following a template for what makes quote unquote good pacing? Or maybe in this case, marketable pacing. Every episode goes so fast with things constantly happening at the drop of a hat and jokes being repeated over and over. It's a goddamn nightmare. Slow down, I want to take things in. Where does this ideology that kids need faster programming come from? Samurai Jack was incredibly popular with both boys and girls of a young age, and the majority of the show is silent with visuals portraying what's relevant to the story and its themes. It's a genius show that's appreciated and renowned with people from all ages, genders, cultures, etc. Now, Samurai Jack is a masterpiece, and I'm not saying copy everything it did. That'd be impossible. But what I am saying is slow it down a bit. Take a lesson from the greats. The Loud House is a comedy series unlike Jack, and it allows for the viewer to feel for the characters and root for them. It's basic storytelling. There are a lot of great and clever jokes sprinkled in throughout, and we get times where the characters are sad and we need time to breathe. It's not shoving everything in your face every five seconds. It's just well written. That's why these shows are so popular. Kids will still pay attention in your story and comedy if it's good. But maybe that's why these new shows opt for a faster pace. Maybe they just aren't good. Maybe they know their staff isn't good. The shows I compare this to in the pacing department, I hate all of them. I've called all of them cash grabs for multiple reasons. Studios and creators seem to be minimizing effort and quality in favor of whatever's eye-catching and fast enough to keep you there to watch advertisements. Cartoons have always been there to make money. That's the goal of TV, and that's fine. But the majority of these coming out today are Teen Titans Go influenced cash grab trash. Bunsen is no exception. A lot of the show is just constant yelling. It's got that LOL so random tagline every businessman in the industry seems to believe they need. 
The flash animation is also trashed here. It looks awful. All the characters seem to have this aesthetic bounciness to them that make them look manufactured and wrong. You can tell they did it on the cheap without much thought. It's similar to Fairy Odd Parents, but without the art style of most of Butch Hartman's shows. If if I wanted a boring kid getting magic things happening to him, I'd watch the early seasons of FOP. The pacing is tight in those, the characters are funny, the animation is good, I could get what this is trying to sell elsewhere, and much better. There's also, like, this girl who's racist against Bunsen for some reason and starts a lot of the conflict, but everyone is so nice to Mikey and Bunsen for being different, which is like a commentary on, on PC culture or something. Oh god, I don't care. It's not even so bad that it's interesting. It's not even so bad that I can articulate it. It's not interesting to write about, but it's not average enough to stomach either. It's somewhere in the middle, and it's that middle ground that makes it so awful. It's manufactured by a checklist. The jokes are edgy and in your face. Fast pacing to keep our drooling viewers happy shameless knockoff of FOP because it's going out the door cheap flash animation like Teen Titans Go check and mate it's so boring to watch and to talk about I hate it just more of the same problems and BS throughout the rest of the episodes oh whatever I wanted to give this show a fair shot, I really did, but I simply can't. It's not fun to watch. Hell, I shouldn't even be making this video. It's just so forgettable. The only reason I'm doing a should you watch on it is because I want to give a recommendation on a show, but it's not even fun to talk about. At least when I did one of these on My Night and Me, it was fun to take down. This show just makes me sad. I'm fully convinced this dollar store Teen Titans Go is manufactured by Satan. Next video, I want to talk about something I actually like. And support me on Patreon so I won't go insane by reviewing this crap. 1 out of 10. If you want my recommendation, don't watch it.